Mother Teresa. And uh, it's very beautiful and inspiring. So I shall begin. May today there be peace within. May you trust God that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith. May you use those gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content knowing that you are a child of God. Let this presence settle into your bones and allow your soul the freedom to sing, dance, praise, and love. It is there for each and every one of us. Amen. 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 Love that prayer. So if you can't find candy on your screen, because we're now 19, 20, we're 20, um, you're welcome to go to screen view, our speaker view, and then we know where that little, where the face is. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so candy you're welcome to start all right well good morning or actually i'm sorry good afternoon, good afternoon. yeah oh thank you again for having me having me back um for those of you who haven't met me before just give you a little overview of who I am. That I am a board certified chaplain. I'm a spiritual counselor and a transformational healing coach. I've worked many years in hospice. Um, I am a Jewish chaplain, although I work in a always an interreligious, multicultural interfaith way. Um, and I, I actually like to say that um, Judaism is a big um, pillar in the way that I practice. Um, I have found through my own spirituality that the Ways of engaging ritual as a way of expanding my spirituality, connecting me with divine spirit. And you'll hear me mention at different times, different names of the divine. It's said in Judaism that we, there are 72 names for God. Hmm. And, um, I, I will add that, um, so I've been a hospice chaplain. I've been in the hospital, in hospice, at the end of life, by the bedside, um, in the prison as a chaplain, and I am now in private practice. So mm -hmm. I predominantly, my specialties are working with illness, death, dying, grief and loss and trauma with individuals and families. And I'm writing my first book, so you'll probably hear some of that. So, um, what, did, did somebody make a comment? Anything? Okay. So what I'd like to do, barring no fires, because if you were with us last year, uh, we did have a little fire. Actually, it was bigger than we had hoped, but it was a lot of candles because um, the candles, I wanted to light the candles because in Judaism, we, we use candles a lot for every Friday night, we light Shabbat candles. And um, the tradition is to have at least two. But our tradition, and many other people do this as well, is you light a candle for each person. So maybe each person in your family. Maybe it's, we used to have a lot of big gatherings. We have a small place now, and obviously it's COVID, so we haven't had any gatherings other than virtual. 
but we would light, we would light either I would light them and light one candle for each, or I would allow others to come up and light. And it just, it just, it warms my heart. It brings, my children used to say, by the way, and um, Judy, was it you or no, Diane, who was it that mentioned that her daughter-in-law is, is your, yeah, that's Judy, okay. You know, everything moves around on Zoom, so. Mm -hmm. So, there we are, I'll remember. <laughs> Um, and so, uh, why did I say that? Let's see. Um, you were asking, mentioning that you had been to a Shabbat dinner. So my children used to say, because I used to be involved with the welcoming group with their school and we used to plan hospitality. It's actually, hospitality is a very big thing in Judaism and welcoming guests. And um, so I asked my children, I said, so how does it feel for you when we have, have people over for Shabbat? And they said, it's like having God to dinner. And it was just oh, so precious. It stayed with me, you know, for years. And it, and it really did raise the vibration in our home. And so it's um, a really treasured time. So what I want to share with you about Shabbat, so we light candles on Shabbat. We light candles for every memorial. We light candles on every holiday. And um, my mom's anniversary of her death was just a week ago. And I lit a candle. It's called her yard site candle. And I think I probably shared this with you guys last year, but when we light candles, there's a bringing in of the light. And it's said that the, the deceased souls, that, um, that they come and visit uh, when we light our candles. And it's, um, there's something very spiritual about it to where it really um, opens up a channel for something greater. And it's said really that Shabbat is a time of transformation. And I wanna share about that for a moment. So when we bring in Shabbat, so Shabbat itself, means so we say shabbat shalom that is a one of the greetings shabbat means cease to cease to stop god created the world in six days we're supposed to stop that is practiced by many many people in many different ways so i think i said this to you last year if you ask 10 Jews, you'll get 10 different answers. There are varying different ways of practice. And I also would say that, um, you know, I hear people talk about the Jew, a Jewish faith as if, and the Jewish religion, but I really like to say it's really more of a way of life than it is a religion. Judaism does not require you do have certain beliefs. You are Jewish really because of your lineage. There are certain tenets in Judaism, um, but, but you, you don't even have to believe in God and to be Jewish. That is not, it's very different than what you probably are aware of about religion. So in a moment, we're going to light our candles. What I want to share with you, it said that Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday belong to the Shabbat coming. And Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday belong to the Shabbat past. It's set up this way so that we take the sweetness 
and the elevation of Shabbat, the light, the sacred into the week and make it holy. Any questions before I uh, take us into something else? So, so how does, um, you don't have to believe in, in God. Mm -hmm. um, it, has that always been so? Is that just part of the way of life and tradition? Has it always been? I can't really answer that if it's always been. Huh. Um, that that's always been that that I want to say that's the caveat that you don't have to believe in God, but there but there's a very big divine presence within Judaism. So I say that like that because in other religions there are specifics of you are you believe this and this and this and and that makes you that identifies that religion in judaism your lineage my mom was jewish so that makes me jewish it's it's different but but that doesn't mean that um, there's a practice of Judaism. So it's a very, I guess the way I would really describe it is that um, a belief system comes from the integration of a practice. So for me, I grew up and I really didn't have a relationship with a God in my understanding until many, many years later. So I think it's, it's, it's really important because I've often felt as a chaplain, and I have lots of discussions about religion, that religion is a set of practices, we'll call it that, that open a doorway for a relationship with the divine. So which comes first? Is it the relationship for, with the divine or is it, is it the practice? Right, because we don't, so, so I'm just, ask me anything, um, but that's where it gets, it's confusing. It's a little bit sort of disconcerting. Yeah, Diane, Diana. Yeah, related to that, um, I was surprised and took notes on the fact that there's 72 names for God. Would you say a little more about that? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know them all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll give you an example. So, um, the name Elohim is actually one of the names of God, right? But it's actually a plural. But, but if you, but what I didn't share, and I may have shared it another time, in Judaism, the belief in God is in one God. <clears throat> so you might say, why are there 72 names for God then? Does that mean there's more than one God? No. But it means that there are many different aspects of God. So compassion and love and presence and feminine and masculine and it, it, it's the all that is. Um, that, that, so, but, but what I wanna say about Elohim, the names, the common names of God that are used they were born of a of a of an era, so different names were used biblically at different times. Okay, a word a name like Adonai, which is really looks, and I know you've probably heard people say Yahweh. You've heard that, I'm sure. 
So people came up with that because there's an acronym that actually we pronounce as Adonai, Adonai, which means my Lord or my master, but it's not the pronunciation of that word. That word was a, uh, it's called a, a tetragrammaton. It was um, there, the other part of that, um, you've probably heard I am that I am. Um, this words of that actually came from Asher, Aser, Asher, Aser, which really meant um, I am, I will be what I will be, meaning God didn't just create and done. God is a, a active re recreating all the time, all the time. It's a ongoing, it's, um, we're always becoming. And even on this spiritual journey, um, we're gonna be growing spiritually throughout our entire life and beyond. Um, that probably goes into the death and dying conversation, but we can get there. Um, but the names are very much, I'm going to, when we light candles, I'm going to take you through a little, um, well, the tree of life we call Eitz Chaim, is the Hebrew. And it's said that our bodies are a tree of life. That is, we embody that eight time. And in Jewish mysticism, we have what we call, some of us call the Jewish chakra system. So it's, there are different places in the body that are our various centers. And I was going to just, as we light the candle, bring in that light in a new way kind of just explore that with you, just kind of take you through those aspects so that you kind of feel that energy is, is so much more than a name. I guess that's what I want to communicate to you is that um, there are many uh, traditional and Orthodox Jews that say for the name of God, they say Hashem, which is the name because it's bigger than any name and they don't put the O in God. That's a whole nother discussion, but it's really because they're short of that one. So you might see somebody write G dash D or G explanation point. D and the the quickly the belief is really that um, you wouldn't want to throw the word God away and I don't personally subscribe to it I will do that in respect for those that I know practice that way but I don't feel like you can destroy God so I don't feel like that fits for me. So, um, but there are different things like this that are in different sects of Judaism. Mm -hmm. So as we light these candles, I wanna just share with you that there's a tenant in Judaism called tikkun olam, and it means tikkun is healing or repair, and olam is the world. And Judaism is a very action, ritual way of life. And um, the things that we do in the world, we take our part in healing the world. So when we light candles, we, we bring in the light for ourselves and our families. Um, 
in our relationships. We can put any mm -hmm. illness in that light and it's a light for the world. It's a light that hopefully all of those sparks of light that each of us carry, that each the, the divinity in each one of us can come together and brighten the world. So that is my hope as we light these candles. And um, by the way, I told you that the, you know, Shabbat belongs, the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday belongs to the Shabbat past. So I don't generally clean up my candles until Tuesday. So I left one of the empty ones here as I put new ones down and I put my two and then I put one for you all as a group. Thank you. Cause I didn't know how many people would be here and I didn't want to cause, cause a fire in my apartment either. So, so I will um, light my candles and you can light yours and I'll show you how we do that. We bring in the light, we do it three times and we cover our eyes and then I'll sing our um, Shabbat blessing. And then I, um, I'll take you through, we can sit back down and then I'll take you through this little um, tree of life, sort of like a little meditation, um, brief, brief one. Um, the other thing I want to share with you it, real quickly before we light these candles is that um, when I was in seminary, one of my teachers shared a story because, you know, we have all different sects of Judaism, right? We have very ultra Orthodox, we have um, conservative, we have reform, we have reconstructionists and every way practices is a little bit different, right? And there was a story he told about, about Shabbat and how maybe somebody didn't get to light their candles on Friday night. And rather than judging themselves or someone else, allowing someone else to judge them, he said, you know, there's no harm in bringing in Shabbat at any time. And um, I really love that because honestly, What Jesus was talking about when he, many, many years ago, before even a religion, another religion started, he said to the community, you just don't have to be so rigid. <laughs> you know, and, and I think it's really, really important because there have been many a children that have gone away from religion and and people have gotten a bad taste in, about religion and as if the, they had to apply right now do this right right here right now or else and i subscribe to a belief that you can begin your day again anytime you can light a candle anytime you can bring in shabbat and if and the, the reason for two candles is a member Shabbat and be to bring peace into the home. And so if you are in a place and you need peace, you can bring Shabbat in anytime you want. And I just love that. So here we are on a Monday morning or Monday afternoon bringing in Shabbat. So... So I'm going to light my candle and you can light your, my candles and you can light yours. And then I will show you what I'm going to do.
So what we do is we bring in our hands like this. We do this three times. And then we cover our eyes. And I always ask for this light to fill me, to fill my family, my home, and across the world. And then I say, sing the blessing, which I will do for you. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech, Ha'alam, Asher kedushanu b'mitzvotav, And then we uncover our eyes and just have this radiant look at this glow of light. And uh, for me, it just fills me up. Um, so I hope that was nice for you. Mm. Lovely. Thank you. So the prayer the translation of the prayer is, blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who commands us to kindle the Sabbath lights. So it's a, it's a, a woman's, um, it's the woman's job. My husband does it too, but you know, we're in an egalitarian sort of household. But um, it's a woman's job because the woman is responsible for the spirituality in the home. That is, she's, she's considered the vessel. And you know, I used to feel like, you know, my husband was, um, more a more learned Jew when I met him than I, and I always felt like, you know, okay, he should lead the way. It took, it was many years before I realized that, wait a minute, um, I'm the vessel here. And I saw this play out in a lot of different ways. You know, I, I don't know, I, I just, I see us, and maybe this is the, um, the, our ability to multitask, is it the ability to multitask or is it that we're multifaceted? Um, in Judaism, men are, if you're traditional, you're required to say a hundred prayers a day. I think actually women are too, a hundred prayers a day. And the men are supposed to study. This is, this is traditional Judaism. And they're supposed to study like nonstop. And the reason why is because their distractibility. Um, it's, it's true. It's true. And, and the, the constant need to, to be focused on um, spirituality. That that's the uh, that concept was if if they focus on spirituality then they're not they're not going to be distracted in other ways. Um, the woman has many many tasks. There are there are many um, commandments, um, mitzvot or commandments that are required are time sensitive for men, and not for women. There's men, women don't have the same time constraints as men do. 
Um, so I wanted to share that with you too. Um, any questions, thoughts, comments? Can you give us an example of something that the men have to do at a specific time that women don't? Mm. Well, men are required morning prayer. They're supposed to do that in a certain amount of time and they're supposed to do it at a certain time of the day. And they're supposed to do it three times a day. Women are not required to do that. Now, mind you, we were traditional in some ways, but we are not orthodox. So this would be an orthodox way. Um, the one time sensitive is technically, I suppose it is time sensitive because Shabbat comes in at a certain time a day, certain time. Kathy? Did you have a question? No, my husband just walked in and I waved at him. Hi. Sorry. That's okay. Yes, Eve, Evie? Heavy. Yeah. Evie. Evie, I, I was just going to say I enjoy um, uh, all that you said about the candle and bringing in the light. But I I particularly liked um, that it's, it, it's possible or maybe it definitely does happen that the deceased often will come and visit because um, I, I just like that idea. I, I, don't, I don't feel like I really need the candle because I feel my mother a lot around me anyways. Mm -hmm. But um, I like the idea. I, I know when, one time my very beloved aunt died of ovarian cancer at 70 and I used to just pray and pray and pray and pray please, please give me a sign. I, you meant the world to me. Please reach out to me. It never happened. I, I, think, it, I think it never happened because I, I wanted it so bad. But I have gotten, uh, and nothing ever has come from her that I can detect. But I definitely have a lot from my mother. But I like the idea of the practice of that or the invitation that it could could happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and interestingly, I, I feel my mom all the time as well. So I don't. I'm aware of it. I think it's a beautiful. Um, it's a beautiful sentiment and opening. Um, I don't need it I, either. But I also tune in because. It may be somebody else besides my mom that's coming yeah. to, you know. I, um, I tell you a, a really interesting story. So, as you know, I, I've, I've worked in the end of life for a long time, and um, I was still in California. <laughs> and um, I have always been able to have a sense of I'd go to funerals, and I would know that the person I could feel their presence. And, um, and sometimes see them. And so um, there was one Shabbat afternoon, it was about five o'clock. And um, there was a, a family that went to our kids Jewish day school. And um, the, the wife had been ill. And um, I didn't really know I knew them, but I didn't know them well. And it was about five in the afternoon and I said, and I knew she had declined and I um, turned to my husband and we were just sitting in our bedroom and I said, um, I think Julie just died. And she said, she, he, sa he said, really? Well, how do you know? I said, well, cause I think she just visited me. And I said, well, he said, well, what did she say? I said, she said, take care of Bob. And I go, okay. So I just kind of took it to heart the next day because it was Shabbat, right? So I wouldn't have talked to the, the Chabad rabbi. That's where they went. Next day, I talked to the, the Chabad rabbi, the wife, his wife. And I said, did Julie die? And he, she said, yeah. And she said, um, yeah, he, my husband walked over there about five o'clock. So I was just, um, so I just, it's profound to mm -hmm. me that it, it happened, 
because it never gets old actually when it happens mm -hmm. and um and that it happened on shabbat mm -hmm. and i knew it and and since then i actually became very good friends with her husband and i was there for her husband and for their four kids mm -hmm. it took me nine months to tell him that though Ooh. I did tell him right away. Yeah. 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 So um, I wanted to just take you through this little brief sort of meditation just to kind of have a feel and hear the different aspects of the divine that are really within us. Um, I won't be able, it's very in depth, really. Um, Jewish mysticism, Kabbalah, that would be a whole nother time I visit you, but it's, it's, it's in depth, and I'll try to explain a few things about it as we go through it, um, but I wanted to do it for you for two reasons. One, um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an advocate and a big believer that we process things and hold things in our body and that we have um that the divine is within us and that there's something being worked out i may have shared this with you um last year that um you probably all know the story about uh, jacob wrestling with an angel in the middle of the night possibly from Genesis and um, that, that we wrestle with things. And um, that we all have challenges and that um, within this, we're coming up on a holiday of Judaism. It's a minor holiday, but it's called Tu B'Shvat. And it's, um, it's the birthday of the trees, quite honestly. And it's about new growth and it's about connection. And so I feel like when we connect with our body, mind and spirit, there is, is much growth to happen. And there's a, there's a, there's a, a possibility and opportunity to be able to connect in a deeper, a greater way with our creator. Mm -hmm. So um, I will do that for you. So you are welcome to um, stand up or you can stay seated. I will stay seated because I think it'll be easier to, to guide you. Um, yeah. So if you're comfortable to just close your eyelids and feel your feet flat on the ground and begin to take a few deep breaths, bringing in that light through the top of your head. And imagine yourself as this vibrant tree, this amazing tree of life. And above your head is this, really this space of, and it really is a, a, a space of, of no boundary, that it's above your head, it's a, it's a light, it's an energy, and it prevails above you. and all around you. And as you come down into the top of your head, on your right, the right side of your brain, it's called, the Hebrew is chokmah. Well, 
before I say that, or you can keep that one, but at the very top of your head, not a, just above where we were, but at the very top is actually called Keter. And it means the crown, the crown, the divine crown. So that is at the top of your head. And as you come down into your right side of your head, there is divine wisdom, Hokma. And over on the left side of your head, there is what's called Bina. Bina is understanding, divine understanding. And in the center, sort of back a little bit, but it's actually where Hokma and Bina meet, called Da'at, meaning knowledge or knowing. And this light comes in and connects all three of those through Keter and then down and connects those three areas and comes down through the center of your being and goes to your right shoulder, which is loving kindness, chesed. And you can feel that in your right shoulder and down your arm. And on your left side, your left shoulder and your left arm is called Gavura. Gavura really means strength, but it also means it represents ground boundaries. It represents um, a balance to say yes when we need to and no when we need to. And then we come into the heart space. And that heart space is called Teferet, which is beauty. And we have our beauty, beauty and compassion. When we come down to the right hip which is called coming into the trunk of your tree, which is called Netzach, which really means victory or endurance, stamina. And in our left hip, it's called Hod, H-O-D. And it means splendor and joy. And in the center, which is where our genitalia, basically in the pelvis, the lower pelvis, is called yesod, it's foundation. And then right below that is called Mahuts. And Yesod and Mahuts are part of our grounding. And this energy goes all through our legs and down and grounds us into the earth. And we have our roots and our light comes from the bottom with Shekhinah, which means it's a divine presence. It's the feminine presence of God. And it comes all the way up and around and all around our body and through us. 
And these six particular areas in the middle, the chesed, gevura, teferet, netzach, hod, and yesod, this is where all of our issues get worked out. It's exhausting sometimes, but we need to keep the channel going. So that is the beauty of the light. And we keep that flow going and we're in balance with heaven and earth. And take a big deep breath. Rub your hands together and open your eyes when you're ready. What's that like for you? Lovely, lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. So what questions do you have? I'm not sure how we have time, what time, where, where, what our timing is. 12 is the goal. It's, well, it's not a firm place though. So. One is a goal. Pardon me? One o'clock is the goal. No, 12. Oh yeah, one o'clock. It is now 12.50. Okay. So we have... 10 minutes, but if we go over a few minutes, it's it's normally accepted. I mean, people who have to leave, just leave. <laughs> so what would, yes, Judy. Um, could you say more about Tikkun Olam? That's the first time I've heard it pronounced. I've read it before. Um, and the idea of repairing the world just seem so essential and important and how does that play out in any of the many facets of of judaism well it's a, it's a, it's just near and dear to my heart you know i i truly believe that we we practice the way we do so there's there are many different elements of that in the sense of there are many different ways that we can heal, take our part in healing the world, okay? Starts with us. Um, there's a practice that's called heat photodut. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I won't test you on it. It was, it was talked about from um, Rabbi Nachum, no, Breslov, Rabbi Breslov of, no, Nachum and Breslov, ages ago, years and years and years ago, um, talked about that we should spend an hour of inner reflection. Heat Bodhidut is an inner reflection, introspection, that we should spend an hour a day really before regular prayer to, to speak to our God in the language of our own presence. Speaking of husbands waving um, and, um, and so this is, this is how I feel like that, that we start tikkun olam that we start healing and repairing the world. We have to look at ourselves. So it's first with ourselves and in our own circle of how we look at what are our challenges and what are our, what are our beliefs and how are we being true to ourselves, and, 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 um, Rising our own, raising our own vibration, raising our own integrity. So that's where it starts, and then it it may be then there are actions of social justice and the various bigger circles that that occurs. Yeah. But starting with the self, 
that's that's not where I would have first have gone, but of course, um, that's a really good idea. <laughs> yeah, that's um, what I feel strongly about um, in my work, my current work, and my work as a chaplain. You know, I've really gotten to see that. You know, we sort of we put ourselves on the back burner. You know, this concept of selfish is, you know, from my work in spiritual psychology, you know, it was, it was not to take care of ourselves, to look at ourselves is not a selfish thing. It's a self care, it's a self honoring. And we, we teach people how to treat us by the way we treat ourselves. Thank you. You, you just gave me permission to ask a question. I, uh, I'm at end of life and I'm interested to hear more about the end of life work from uh, your perspective. Sure. Can I ask what stage of end of life are you in? I have a pancreatic cancer and uh, my doctor um, a little over two months ago said I had between two months and two years. Okay. So um, about lived the two months. There you go. Okay. And but are I, you are you on hospice? I will be very soon. I am going to attempt palliative chemo. I'm willing to try it for three times. Okay. I'm going to start on Wednesday. I, I, I have to say I'm going into it pretty reluctantly. Sure. But uh, I, I throw up, it's done. I'm not going to go any further. But um, I've, I've, I've been to the mortuary and made arrangements for my body and I've been to the church to pick out where in the garden I want my remains to go and I'm seeing an estate attorney on Thursday and uh, uh, there's financial stuff and I'm just trying to take care of as much as I can so there won't be a mess left behind for my daughters to deal with. And uh, I had a lot of fun, enjoyed picking out like the music for my service and that kind of thing. I um, really, and I really acknowledge you for facing that head on. You know, it's a, uh, and it can be joyful. It really can. You know, I am. Um, and, and by the way, I am happy to talk to you aside from this and meet with you. Um, I, I want you to know that this is what I do. You know, oh. this, this is my field. This is my, and I, I, I guess if I, was, if I was working with you directly, and this is for everyone to, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna ask the question and it really is for everyone. What do you think happens when we die? And before you answer that, if you're thinking of answering it, um, I'm writing this book, which I won't really have time to go into now, but it's effectively it's, it's um, the journey of finding my own strength and courage and, and after my mom died. But it's a lot more than that. And it's the spiritual transformation of that and it's the anticipatory grief and it's the the sacred decline and all that and so i i do write a piece in there and said you know when i ask people what do you think happens when we, when we die mm -hmm. people would generally tell me they they they've made all their arrangements and so i that's why i asked the question because it's there's a lot more preparation that can happen. I, I, it came to mind 
I heard a story about a famous rabbi in New York, and he had a, made a recording to be played uh, at the service after his death. And he said, you are probably wondering um, what it's like. And he said, I know, but I can't tell you. <laughs> um, I, I don't know, but I do, like other people have mentioned, I also feel that, especially in the last couple of months, I felt my mother's presence close, you know, and like she's saying, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be good. You'll still be connected to everybody you love. You know, I do think that love is the most powerful force in the universe and it will connect us all. Um, I like that idea you had about lighting a candle. I have, I have two daughters and one of my daughters is a nurse in North Carolina and she and her husband are both um, attend church regularly. They met at church. He was the organist and he's getting a degree in music therapy. And she's a nurse and works with COVID patients and uh, in an emergency room of a small hospital. Uh, my other daughter lives just a few blocks away from me. And she is the mother of my grandsons who are three and five in the light of my life. And she and her husband never go to church. But they're the kindest people. They're so, but I, 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 <laughs> they, they don't do much in the way of any kind of a ritual of anything. Mm -hmm. They sometimes will lift a glass and say cheers. And my grandsons love to do cheers. They'll do cheers with any, with a, you know, Lego or anything, do cheers. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe a candle would be one way to stay connected to Nana. Um, Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. And, um, I, um, I wanted to just share with you that, you know, when I've asked that question, I probably the, the eldest person that I've asked that question to was a 97 year old woman. I said, what do you think happens when you die? And she says, I don't know. I've never done it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. That, whole, that opens up a whole nother piece. And this woman was, she was, she was what I call spiritually transitioning. Her soul was traveling. She was seeing her parents. She was seeing, she was going through a life review. So she saw her, she was seeing her, her house that she grew up in. Um, but the reason I bring that up, Jan, and for everyone, is that we need to talk about it. We really do need to talk about it. What you describe, I mean, just talking about the possibilities. So I write this in my book, but I'll share it with you. My mom said to me, I said, my mom, I said, what do you think happens when we die? She says, I don't know. I think you just die. That's it. And, and she said, I said, well, what are your wishes? And she says, because my mom was not on hospice. She couldn't go on hospice till like she fell and she was like a month um, because she just didn't qualify. And I said, well, what are your wishes? And she says, well, I would love to see my parents again. And I'd love to see my brothers again. And I'm like, well, what if you could? And she says, oh, Candy, I know you believe that, but I don't believe that. I'm like, okay. I planted the seed. I just opened the opportunity of that possibility. Another time I said to her and I said, well, mom, you know, you're gonna be able to talk to me in some way. I'm going to know your presence is there. 
oh, Candy, I know yeah, you believe that. I don't believe that. I'm like, okay, okay. The day she died, now mind you, I was with her. There's a whole longer story, but the day she died, she was in an end of life home. And all my, my two sisters and I were there and I, and I went upstairs to do some yoga. And all of a sudden I heard her say, Candy, I'm going now. Like, okay, mom. And I was okay because, you know, we had had many, many conversations. I even offered to have show tunes at her funeral. You know, I mean, we need to have these conversations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now she shows up as a hummingbird and I've seen her, you know, like just, it's just interesting things that just, and I think the beauty of that, whether you think I'm nuts or not, it's okay. But, um, <laughs> And the beauty of that, and I talk about this with families because we need to ponder the idea that we do have continued connection and that that is comforting. When I, I have this little bitty, um, can you see this little bitty bear? Yeah. I didn't yeah. want much of my mom's, but I had, it's a little bear. It has, you know, that little cologne, like it's a gel. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's my mom. She smelled, that's what she used to wear. And it's just so joyful for me. You mm -hmm. know, these are things that it doesn't have to be something we're afraid of. And I'll share this piece with you. Um, and then, you know, certainly if you want to continue, I can. There's a prayer in Judaism that is done for, that's done different times. It's, it is a mourner's Kaddish. There's a Kaddish, so when somebody's in mourning, either after their loved one has died or um, at the anniversary. This prayer does not say anything about death. Not one single word about death. It's all about life. And it's about the magnificence of God. <clears throat> because <clears throat> there is a strong belief in Judaism that um, if it happened, it must have been God's time. And so to really honor that, that um, it's all, it's divine. And there's the other part, which is a whole nother conversation. And, you know, um, we would need more time, but it's something to consider. Does your, who does your body really belong to? So in Judaism, your body, in traditional Judaism, your body belongs to God. So it really isn't the choice at the end of life is not necessarily about quality of life. Mm -hmm. It's about how is, am I supposed to still be of service? So if there's treatment available and it's, and it's useful, then the belief is the practice would be to seek that treatment. If it's not useful, then, um, you know, that the, it, it may be time for the body to die, but the soul will live on. On that note, <laughs> Do you want to ask more questions? Do you want me to close this out? What is your desire? Andy, I just want to tell you that we had a wonderful session one time that was completely, uh, it just happened, but it was Mother's Day and it was Whiz Day. Mm -hmm. and people started telling stories about their mothers and seeing them in animals. Evie's a bird, right? Uh, my my mom said to me, "I will I will give you a sign." Mm -hmm. And two two birds, two significant birds, showed up. One in her house, <clears throat> which never happened, and one in the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I love that. Yeah. Well, I, that wasn't the only story because yeah, there was a couple of about them. half the people here, or yeah. some who weren't here also told similar stories. So yes. this is not like, what, that can't be true. This is not that kind of a group. 
Right. I didn't right. think so. <laughs> I, this is like my favorite topic, you guys. So, I mean, I could talk about this for hours upon hours. It's truly, it's such a, oh, it's just the experiences I've had are palpable. And so they're, they're really treasured. They're really, really treasured. Even the dream that my mom woke me up, it was spooked me like to high heaven, but it, it's fun to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Judy? Um, I um, just wanted to thank you for the Tree of Life meditation, mm -hmm. which was so lovely. It relates back to my own experiences in yoga and chakras and moving like down. And so it was both familiar and new. And um, we didn't get a chance to say much about it at the time, but it was a lovely experience. So thank you very much. You're very welcome. We might have to have you back on this topic. I would love to. I would. Um, I, I will say that the one of the big reasons that I chose to write this book, and by the way, if, if any of you, I don't know whether y'all got to see, I sent it to Kathy that I was on a talk show recently. I sent it on about whenever you sent that to me a few weeks ago. Yeah. So that in that, um, that's a, it's a about 45 minutes or 50 minute um, talk show. So that talks about um, grief and end of life, but also that you can go to my website and I can send that out and you can download a sneak preview of my book. Um, it's called Moxie. Um, finding courage, strength, determination, and love through grief. And I wrote this book because I really felt like my mom was nudging me. My mom taught me about Moxie. Um, I didn't know the word. She played Scrabble, but but it showed up like two months after she died. And um, there's this tenet in Judaism where we say when, after somebody's died, we say, may their memory be for a blessing, not a blessing, but for a blessing. And what that means to me is do something with it, make it mean something. And, um, during the depths of my grief, I was writing letters to my mom and I just was like, where are you? Where are you? I want to hold you. I want to talk to you. I want you to touch me. And I was not like big about hugging, by the way, because I felt kind of smothered at one time in my life. So to have that was just, there was just such a powerful transformation that happened after because I dove into it. I knew I was going to grieve. I had all this experience with grief and death and dying. I knew I was going to grieve. I just didn't know what it would look like. So I will send out that website or maybe Kathy, you have it. Uh, why don't you send it again? It's, you know, how emails build up. Yeah, I'll send it to Kathy and she can forward it on, but um, you can download, you know, you can download that little, the introduction is what's in there and um, get a little sneak preview. I do plan to complete it by the end of March and it'll be published this year. So- um, Exciting. It is exciting. And I really wanted people to know that there is a, it doesn't have to be a taboo subject. That, that is for sure. Thank you, Candy. Can I just ask uh, permission if Kathy could send me your phone number? Please. Yes. Yeah. Any one of you can have my phone number. Um, it's on, you can, my, on my website. Can we put my website in the chat box? Yeah. Oh, we don't have a chat box. We don't have that. So I'll send it out and that'll be my, that's my um, office information. So yeah. Yeah, I'm happy for anybody to have it. Well, we really very much. tell everybody is just enthralled with what you have to say. And uh, I think we need to invite you back another time. You can be a regular with us if you want to be. 
I would be honored. This is like I said, this, this is a, Judaism, death, dying, grief, loves. They're all my favorite topics. So yeah, yeah. Thank I'm you. honored. Um, you know, please send me a message or let me know how I can be of service, really. Wonderful. And I'm happy to close this out. Okay. Have we blown our candles out already? Oh, that's the other thing about Shabbat candles. They burn until they go out. But oh. if you have a regular candle candle, then you probably wouldn't want to do that or burn the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> mm. Well, I would just invite you to just come into your heart. And we ask that divine spirit to fill, surround, and protect us, each of us, in our going and our comings, our comings and our goings. May we be filled with light. May we be shown with gentle direction, with guidance. May we connect with one another, be vulnerable, and allow divine to have that strength, the strength to lift you, the strength to carry you. And we ask that divine presence to give you whatever bits of courage that you need to have Take whatever steps you need to take to have those sacred conversations with our children, our spouses, our friends. And may you be enveloped in every way. Thanks. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Amen actually means fulfilled. Well. Okay. Thank you, Candy. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Pleasure. Love to all of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.